Good morning. My name is Mike Silver. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I thank you for joining us this morning. The title of this talk is The Tower of Babel. And we're going to start with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings you give us every day. And we ask your touch on this talk. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, um, the Tower of Babel, pretty cool story, but what is the story? Maybe some of you haven't heard about it. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's found in Genesis 10, chapters 10 and 11, and it occurred about 100 years after the flood. The direct descendants of Noah decided to build a tower to heaven. The reason why they wanted to do this was to make a capital city for themselves so they would stay in one place, but God at that time wanted people to spread out and fill the earth. So God was displeased with this and decided to confuse their language, so he scattered them across the earth that way. The interesting part of this story is found in the first verse, where it says, Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. You know, this is very similar to Acts 2.1, where it says, When the day of Pentecost had come, they... 120 of Jesus' disciples, they were all together in one place, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Now there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this occurred, the crowd came together, and they were bewildered, because each one of them was hearing them speak in his own language. You know, the disciples came out speaking in all these languages. And it's blowing everybody's mind. Now, if you notice, this is almost like the Tower of Babel in reverse. Jesus' disciples were speaking in a miraculous way in different languages to all the nations gathered to Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. And at the same time, this is how it describes the disciples. They were together with one mind and were of one heart and soul, having all things in common. This was the same mind the people building the Tower of Babel had. They were all one and all spoke the same language. You know, when the outpouring of God's Spirit took place in Acts 2, that we're just reading about, verse 5 says it resulted with the power of God being poured out on every nation under heaven. Initially, the nation of Israel as a whole rejected this outpouring of God's Spirit. John 1.11 says he, or Jesus, came to his own, and those who were of his own did not receive him. And after spending his whole life reaching out to the Jews, Paul, the apostle, gave up on them. And this is what he said. Therefore let it be known to you that the salvation of God, this gospel of Jesus Christ, has been sent to the nations. They will listen. You know, the Bible teaches that associated with Christ's return, Israel will return to the Lord and join these nations. Romans 11 says, I say Israel did not stumble so as to fall, did they? May it never be, but by their transgression, salvation has come to the nations. Now, if their transgression is riches for the world and their failure is riches for the nations, how much more will their fulfillment be? For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be? But life 
from the dead. That's from Romans 11, verses 11, 12, and 15. Or putting it another way, when Israel as a nation embraces, embraces Jesus, it will bring even more spiritual riches to the world, more reconciliation to the nations. It'll be a worldwide resurrection. Do you see what Paul is describing here? If Israel rejecting the Lord as a nation resulted in salvation going to the nations, how much greater will it be when Jesus' own people, the Jews, finally accept the salvation Jesus brings? The world will have a spiritual, like the Pentecostals, old Pentecostals would say, a Holy Ghost explosion, right? When Peter gave his sermon on the day of Pentecost, explaining to the people what was happening, this is what he said. There's, there's two parts to it. This is the first part. Men of Judea, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall be in the last days, God says, that I will pour out my spirit on all mankind. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on the servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit. In those days, it's Acts 2, 16, 18. Everything Peter is speaking about up until this point in his sermon was fulfilled in part during the New Testament by the initial outpouring of God's Spirit on the day of Pentecost. The spring feast of Pentecost was a precursor to the much greater fall feast of tabernacles where the full harvest came in at the end of the summer and at the end of the agricultural year. There's a little ringing here. I'm going to turn this just a little bit. There, I think that'll be a little bit better. Tabernacles was when the full harvest came in at the end of the summer and then at the end of the agricultural year. Now that's what this is speaking about here, what Peter is alluding to in his sermon. He's projecting out in the last part of his sermon, to this final outpouring, the outpouring of God's Spirit on Pentecost, the, the first one, which gave birth to the church, will be eclipsed by the much greater tabernacles outpouring of God's Spirit at the end of the church age, which will bring the church into full spiritual maturity. Now this is the second part of Peter's sermon. I will pour out my spirit on all mankind, and I will grant wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below, blood, fire, and columns of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord shall come. The first outpouring of God's spirit associated with the day of Pentecost in Acts 2, the first part, is a drop in the bucket compared to what's coming. So getting back to the Tower of Babel, Remember what God said about the people building the tower? Behold, they are one people, and they all have the same language. Then God said something very interesting. This is what they began to do. Now nothing which they purpose to do will be impossible for them. That's Genesis 11, verse 6. Now you think about this. The people building the tower arrived at a place where they became so focused they became so unified, they became so one, nothing was impossible for them. Even still, God said they had to be stopped because what they were doing was displeasing to God. They weren't doing the will of God, they were doing something opposition to God. And there's nothing that, that was impossible for them because they're so focused. Now think about this. How much more, how much more Will the Holy Spirit be able to accomplish that which is pleasing to God? To bring the church of Jesus Christ into its full manifestation. To pour out a spirit on the church. To pour out a spirit on all mankind. To pour out a spirit on the whole earth. Not just in part on only 120, like on the day of Pentecost. But on the scale of the full spiritual harvest of the Feast of Tabernacles. To bring the whole church across the whole earth to the place where we become one people and all have the same language and become focused and unified like the people building the Tower of Babel. If these people enter into a place of unlimited power without God's blessing, how much more will we enter into a place of unlimited spiritual power with God's blessing when His Spirit is poured out upon us? 
Psalm 110.3 says, God's people will be willing in the day of your power. This is referring to when God's people Israel will return to the Lord with their whole heart, and the whole earth will go from death into life. It will go through a resurrection. The Spirit of God will be poured out, and the whole earth will be liberated from Satan's kingdom of death into Jesus' kingdom of resurrection life. What was true about the world during the Tower of Babel in a bad way will be true about the world to come in a good way. The Bible says this about the world to come. God will pour out his spirit on all mankind and all Israel will be saved. It will be life from the dead. It will bring even more spiritual riches to the world and reconciliation to the nations. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In the days to come, the whole world will become unified and focused and become one people and speak in one language, just like the people building the Tower of Babel. This is a time to look forward to, and I don't think it's too far away. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us. And give us his peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.